Okay, this is a 2021 Godfrey Sweetwater 1680CX, a 16-foot pontoon boat. The main motor is a 50-horsepower Suzuki that pushes it along pretty nicely. But I want a backup system and maybe do some fishing, so I am going to mount a trolling motor on it. And this is the trolling motor. It's a half swing, 12 volt, 55 pound thrust, 54 inch rod trolling motor. And I've added the plug on it to go to this socket. And what I will say is do not skimp on your sockets and plugs and wires, because these things can drop to 50 amps. This is a 70 amp Marinko socket, because I've seen the lesser ones scorched and with melted wires. Then I have a 12 volt deep cycle gel, 100 amp per hour battery. That socket has wires that go to a circuit breaker, 60 amps, very important. That then goes to a power cutoff switch that then goes to the battery. We are going to mount the Cayman with a tune troll mount to keep it out of the playpen on the pontoon boat. That mount will go on the front and it will be the SR mount with the XB bracket specifically for the Sweetwater. I positioned a trolling motor about where I think I'll put it, but we'll see when I get the mount and do some more measurements. The battery that I showed you for the trolling motor is 66 pounds. And so I'm thinking for weight distribution, that needs to go on the left side of the boat as you're sitting in the driver's seat. And the trolling motor is 54 inches. The deck of the boat is 24 inches above the water line. And you need the trolling motor, the top of the motor submerged 12 inches. So that's 36 inches and some. And at 54 inches, the head of the motor will barely stick up above the top of that seat cushion. And it's a remote controlled motor. And so if you're in the back of the boat, to know which direction the motor is pointing, you need to see the head of the motor. In which case, that drives the positioning as well. <clears throat> so you'll want it about here, where with the gate closed from the rear of the boat, you can see the head of the motor right about here to determine which way it's moving and pointing. So all of this is driving the consideration of where you're going to mount this. I also would prefer the motor be on the hinge side of the gate as you walk out instead of having any obstructions over here. So I think it's real close to where I propose putting it which means that the Tune Troll SR mount with the XB bracket will probably go somewhere around here. But once we get it, it's being shipped, I'll know for sure. I guess this is part of what you go through when you're deciding where to mount the trolling motor. As I discussed on a prior video, the 54 inch half swing Cayman, once the motor submerged, 12 inches the head will be about here right about here and i'm thinking that's a better angle on that side just the port side from where i normally sit to absorb the movement of the head so that's a consideration so i'm rethinking positioning it on the starboard side in addition where i plug the motor in it's right here so that wire will come right from the motor there and be less of a trip hazard. And you say, well, why don't you get a longer rod for the motor? Well, if I do, it'll come off one end of the other. And when you're docking, it'll extend past the sides of the boat on one side or the other. So that's a good length. Okay, so I'm thinking maybe the bracket goes here. And with everything taken off, the XB bracket by itself is not that obtrusive. Another couple of things I've done is this is the Ninja Weed Grass Cutter. And it cuts weeds 
mill four, I drill a lily pad as the prop turns and they get caught up in here. Very effective if you watch the YouTube videos. A final consideration was the weight. The motor's 40 pounds, the battery 66 pounds. So I called it 110 pounds on the port side of the boat. If there's one passenger, 150 pound gentleman driving the boat, then you got it pretty evenly balanced. A couple of other things I've done is run a wire all the way from the troll motor battery underneath the boat in a corrugated plastic tube all the way back here where I have a NOCO 5 amp 2 bank charger. 5 amp charge on each bank. So it charges any chemical type battery, even 6 volt. And that is powered by a plug socket I put in here, also from NOCO. So that there's no wires in the boat when it's charged and you dock, you flip this cover up, you plug it in, and everything's on autopilot. These charges are really nice because they desulfate batteries. If you look at a lot of them, you'll find that they have a maintenance mode, but they don't desulfate. That's a consideration to think about if your boat sits for a long time, where you draw the batteries down heavily. So part of the Haswing motor mount on the Tune Troll quick release plate was the fact that it didn't have any holes aligned with the Haswing. It also didn't have this cutout to let the shaft come down. So I wound up doing that with a jigsaw, that was fun. You have to make sure there's enough clearance there that the shaft doesn't hit the metal. These four holes I had to drill precisely and now I think we've got that mounted. So having decided to put this tune troll bracket and trolling motor mount on the port side of the boat, you have to consider this as a dimensional problem, X, Y, and Z. Why you have no control over it. This bracket has to sit up against the skirting. I don't have a rubber gasket, so that's not a problem that I have to deal with. It should fit pretty tight up against there. Then you gotta worry about left and right. The x-axis. I don't want this bracket to be a trip hazard. And yet, the head of the motor when it's stowed and the actual propeller motor section have to be well within the bounds of the size of the pontoon boat. You don't want to hang it over the edge. Then the z-axis is the height. But with remote control, the head will be right here assuming two inches, two feet to the water line, another foot submerged for the motor. This is what's left of a 54 inch shaft after those factors are taken up. So then, stepping carefully, the prime concern is underway with the gate closed and being in the back with the remote, will you be able to see the head of the motor to determine your direction? And I'm thinking that's pretty acceptable. It'll be lower than that actually. It'll be about six inches lower, but I think that's still fine. I just need to be able to see it. Hopefully anywhere in the boat. But if I can see it from the captain's chair, that's probably pretty good. So then it becomes a question the left and right location and this is close it's out of the doorway but you got to consider when you tilt the motor up to deploy it you don't want to be near this pontoon so that's the big factor with the uh, x-axis so I will be making that decision short next thing you should do is mount the bracket upside down where you think you're going to locate it so that the bolt holes are under here and you can test for interference with both the plate, reinforcing plate, and the bolt. So on my Godfrey Sweetwater, this is no issue and the brace is no issue. That's the rearmost, sternmost bolts. They won't be a problem. And you got this extra reinforcement here, which I really like for support for the troll motor. This, I will have to notch that metal brace. And I'm not sure that this will go in there. Unless I trim it. 
so that's a consideration but no matter where I do it uh, quarter starboard the same aluminum braces there so it's either mounted or not because it's got to be flush to the fender skirt this is the tune troll bracket it's the XP bracket just for the sweet water and it fit on there fine except these two bolts went right through and I used their under hood brace under deck brace these hit the L channel brace which is aluminum brace all the way across the deck I had to notch those to get the nuts on but what the good news is that reinforcement goes completely across so it's very secure and that's all that's on the boat when you take everything else off this is the SR mounting plate put this in here like that secure this in it This is brand new, so the threads are fresh, okay? Then you take the motor, put these tabs under the front, right here, lock that in. Put this plate on the back, which locks these tabs in, and the motor is on, okay? XP bracket, SR mount, Hayman, um, Haswing Cayman engine, remote controlled, about the cheapest remote control you get if you want to deploy it. You just hit the foot lever, put it down, it locks in. And of course, this is the remote control. And so. It all works from this remote control on your land. Your steering, speed, okay. If you want reverse on this particular motor, you gotta turn it backwards. And this, let me shut the propeller off, is the Ninja Grass Blade. A superior precision sonar. It's got a blade on there. Hydrilla, mill four duckweed. Anything that comes up in your prop will be cut off right here, so it'll go right through the weeds. So when you want to stow it, you loosen up your ring. Unless it's set it's high enough. This is good for a demo. I like the prop turned out. And then pull it up. And it goes into a cradle. I'm new at all of this, though. So. And that's it. She stowed.